Thank you for watching another episode of The Boat Geeks. If you are liking what you're finding here at our channel, please hit the thumbs up below. And please like and subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. Absolutely. And you can comment too. Feel free to comment. Yeah, we'd love to hear what you think. Thank you. And so we went to see the boat, of course, not knowing what was going on under the water line, but he did disclose there was no rudder. And uh, it turned out it wasn't free. He wanted money for it. And we eventually settled on a price. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, towed it straight to Port Townsend with our tugboat mm. and hauled it out. And that's when we found the Torito worms, which yeah. we'd never seen those before. It was just one They're more thing on the list of things. Yeah. crazy things that can happen to wood boats, right. you know? Are they, do you, can you see the sign from the outside or is it when you start? You see holes. It's like giant termite holes. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I've noticed it was happening when I was like chunking a plank out and all this clear ooze started mm -hmm. coming out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, that's <laughs> not right. This yeah, is very that's strange. Not <laughs> From beautiful Port Townsend, Washington, a Victorian seaport on the Salish Sea, and recorded aboard the Motor Vessel Traveler, it's the Boat Geeks with Darren and Darren. Welcome to the next episode of the Boat Geeks podcast. I am your host, Darren. And I'm your other host, Darren. And our wonderful guests today are Nico Jensen and Aaron Wenholz of, well, of many boat projects, but also you happen to uh, be the the owners, operators, um, and know-it-all of the uh, Longship Marine <laughs> store down in Polsbo yes. uh, in Puget Sound. And one of my favorite shops, but we'll get to all of that. Um, welcome, Nico and Aaron. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. Absolutely. We uh, So we've been talking about having you on the podcast for a very long time. Uh, Darren and I are both fans of uh, Longship. Um, totally fun place to go. Like if I lived in Polsbo, I think I'd be in there every day that you're open. <laughs> <laughs> um, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be able to stop myself. It's a treasure trove of cool items. And we will get to all that. But this being the Boat Geeks podcast, we're all about boats. We love boats. And uh, we have something in common with boats as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, why don't you guys tell us what you love about boats? Obviously, you do. You're you're neck deep in the in the world of boating. Uh, Aaron, what is your relationship to boats, and what do you love about boats? Well, I I love being on the water. Uh, it's constantly changing. There's never the same moment that exists in boating. And from the boating perspective, I like the self sufficiency and you're kind of just your own world out there. Mm -hmm. You can be anyway. Um, that's probably the, th the things that I love the most, but it, it grows from there. The, the peace and the, uh, like the, the quiet we're, we're in Puget sound. It's a pretty busy boating area. Yeah. I'd say the challenges, I, I do love the challenges of boating too. I, I, yeah. for some reason, love docking and tight maneuvering and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I, I like yeah, when my, I my heart goes pitter patter uh -huh. and anchoring. <laughs> and after you're anchored, the enjoyment of the solitude or, or just watching things happen around you. Yeah. It's that constant change that I love. That's. Did you grow up in a boating family or? Not really. When I, did you discover this uh, wonderful world? Somehow before, my, my family is not a family of boaters, but we lived near the Des Moines Marina in Des Moines, Washington. And, yeah. and some of my most memorable times were walking down to the marina and just walking around looking at boats. And I just mm -hmm. would look at them and wonder what's going on inside yeah. and where they go and all that kind of thing. And then when I was uh, 12 years old, we moved to central Washington to a, live on a lake and so that was my introduction to boating, essentially. And I started off, my first boat was a a 10-foot pontoon boat that was built of World War II uh, airplane floats. Oh, wow. wow. And it had Neat. a six-horse Mercury on it. And we went all over that lake and had so <laughs> much fun. It, it just was a blast. And I, you know, I'm 13 years old and I had the whole lake to myself. Yeah. Or my friends. Yeah. Uh, that was my introduction to boating. Yeah, Very that's awesome. Cool. And Nico, we have uh, something in common, our first boat. Yes. We both uh, <laughs> jumped in the deep end with uh, with buying our first boat. Um, 
why don't you tell me about your first boat and how you got into <laughs> boats <laughs> and loving boats? Sure. So my first boat was called the Iron Feather, and I grew up in Red Feather Lakes, Colorado. And so the feather, I had an affinity for the name right off the bat, but mm. it was probably the 14th or 15th boat that I looked at before settling on a boat. And Aaron and I were uh, just newly friends at that time, and he was kind of helping me through the buying process and he was going, oh, my gosh, is this woman ever going to pick a boat? You know, Because I'd run them all by him. What do you think of yeah. this one? And had various friends helping me to do a buyer survey whenever there was a, a boat on my radar. Mm -hmm. So we finally uh, settled on the Iron Feather. And um, it's uh, 38 feet long. And my only boat prior to that was a canoe in wow. the fresh water so it was a big leap for me for sure jumping in the deep end wow. so uh iron feather is currently my boat uh about five slips down and uh yeah she's 38 foot uh 40 feet overall um built and, in 1946 46. yeah so That's what amazing what made you uh choose iron feather you're looking at a bunch of boats what made you jump in the deep end with a big uh 38 foot wooden boat was it Aaron? <laughs> Did he pressure? Was there any influence there? I know you love wooden boats. We'll get to that. Um, I think he had showed it to me prior, and I wasn't interested in it. And the price kept dropping, and we finally went to go see it. And it was so heavily built. It just had big, beefy beams, and um, it was used by the Navy, contracted by the Navy. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the charm of yeah. the interior layout and the big, um, expansive bow. She has a nice plum bow. Very, very um, proud. Aft deck. Yeah. Just a beautiful boat. Yeah. I mean, it was my wife that actually uh, brought her to my attention when she was up for sale. And uh, yeah, just those old wooden boats. Mm -hmm. uh, it's their lines. It's the the way that they're built. But, and then Iron Feathers construction, though, you talk about beefy. Oh, when, yeah. When you had the boat hauled out yeah. in uh, Boat Haven, yeah. Port Townsend, was it Dave Thomas? Mm -hmm. Thompson. 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 Yeah. Dave Thompson. Not the Wendy's guy. Yeah, not Dave yeah. Thompson. <laughs> yes. Am I hungry? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he came up yeah. and started talking to Darren, and yeah. he's like, right. I remember doing something to one of the stringers back in like 1990. Yeah. He, he rebuilt the whole bow on it. There's oh, wow. photos of him. I have those pictures. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's a lot of history of iron feather around here. And every yeah. once in a while I hear little whispers, you know, mm. party boat and party boat. Bridge yeah. and, <laughs> you know, what, whatever. There used to be kegs yeah. on the aft deck. Yes. I don't know if she still has it, but she had a big plexiglass cover on the aft deck as her roof or her rain shield. Yes. And that extension. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so when I got her, she was probably four years neglected, right. at least, sitting yeah. at the dock. So mm -hmm. it was a, I mean, I always like to say, if you're not working on your wood boat at least four days a week, you're falling behind, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know. And she um, was very far behind. I didn't do a full restoration on her at all by any means, but just getting caught up with the mm -hmm. basic maintenance of the vessel and you know, people like to say, oh, paint's just cosmetic. Don't worry about it. But that is not the case with a wood boat. Mm -hmm. It's literally the skin of the vessel that's keeping the fresh water out. Yes. So there was a lot of painting and sanding in the first year. So did you did you uh, both start working on, with Iron Feather, did you both start working on boats together? I know you've had a lot of boat projects in recently that's been together, right? Like the tugboat. Yeah, and, right. uh, yeah. so what, it, I, what, go ahead. I was going to say, I think we worked together on that boat. I didn't, it wasn't my boat, mm -hmm. but I felt like I was a part of it just as much as she was. Yeah. And we he, enjoyed working on it a lot. He definitely helped with the first haul out, which I would have been very nervous to do myself. And we went to Port Townsend, of course, mm -hmm. and he was the inspiration for that. And that was maybe five months after owning yeah. the boat. Mm -hmm. So. It was always, good to get it out of the a way. Nerve wracking moment, right? Yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And we were happy with what we saw. Yeah. Um, we had to rebuild the windshield, and there was some small patches of repair on the planks, and aft well, cockpit needed recalked. So was that an eye opening experience for you? It or was. Yes. You keep thinking, "Oh, I'm almost caught up. I'm almost yeah. caught up," but it's going downhill almost as fast as you're working on it. So, what, and what years were you the caretaker? Uh, 2015 through 
late 2017, I okay. believe. Yeah. Yeah. And you became the current caretaker uh, in 2020? 20, yeah. 2020? Mm. Yeah, something like that. It's been a few years, so about the same amount of time-ish. Mm. Um, and then you've worked on lots of boats since then. I've seen you. When I had uh, Iron Feather up in Boat Haven, I saw you working on a boat at that time. Right, a little fish boat. Yes. Yeah. And so what are some of the other boat projects that you guys have worked on? And <laughs> a lot. Do you, so part of, you know, I described, obviously, you guys have Longship Marine. But um, I would say boat restoration is a big part of your life, right? And yeah. so are you guys flipping boats? Can you just not help yourselves when you see an old wooden <laughs> boat? Like, what is I must have her. What is the motivation? I love right. it. If I was handy, I'd be doing the same thing, maybe. But uh yeah, what I is... think typically boats find us and yeah. we don't we're not out seeking them. There is a, a select few of boats that are in our life or have been in our life that we actually went out and chose. Yeah. The rest have just shown up. It's uh people see that we do good things with boats or they don't have any idea what to do with the boat and we see a, a worthy project. Mm -hmm. So we take it on and um sometimes they're free, sometimes we pay money for them. Oftentimes we put a lot of work into it and sell it and it seems like we made a profit, but we don't include our hours, you know, of course, yeah. and the fact that we have the store makes things a lot more affordable from a, a products and items that the boat needs standpoint. Mm -hmm. But we, we made a list this morning, which we've never done of how many boats that we've owned since we've met. <laughs> and I know that I've missed a couple, but it's at 18. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> And at one point we had, uh, I'm going to say four large wooden boats in our possession for more than a year. And, you know, you're bouncing around and it's, wow. it's really not humanly capable to take care of four large no. wooden boats. There's always some <laughs> That's kind of fathomable to me, some I... kind of thing happening, things, yes. many things, mm -hmm. something's going downhill the whole time while we're doing this other thing. But <laughs> I think for the most part, it's been very good and it's been yeah. fun for us and it's been good for us. Mm -hmm. Very good for the boats. There are mm -hmm. quite a few boats that have gone into a state where they're maybe not going to live any longer. They might go to somebody that, that doesn't do anything with them. They live on it, yeah. becomes derelict. And we've brought it to a new position in life and found the proper owners and they live on. That's awesome. I totally respect what yeah. you guys do there. It's such a sad thing to see a boat go. And um, especially when you're a fan of wooden boats, mm -hmm. you see that a lot. You know, the Facebook groups and people taking pictures. Somebody please come save this. And yeah. right. um, that's heartbreaking, you know. And, and not only just because it's a boat and we love boats, but there's so much history. You know, when you have a boat from 1946 like Feather, mm -hmm. um, that has been in a lot of hands. It's been to a lot of places yeah. and just has history. It's a... To me, it's almost a, a living being, you know. Yeah. And so... Um, it's... Uh, I guess I, I don't know where the living being comes from, but I think it comes from the emotion that it creates with people lives yeah. on mm -hmm. in that boat. Yeah. Cause it, there's, there's so many emotions. There's good emotions. There's bad emotions, but everything for the most part, like a relationship. Yeah. yeah. It's just like a relationship. <laughs> well, and, and what boats were built from living. That's beings. correct. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. The, there was life in the wood mm -hmm. and right. maybe there still is. We don't fully understand how the universe works. Yeah. But uh, for sure, blood, sweat, and tears, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, uh, uh, your own and and everybody previously. Um, what have been some of your uh, more standout projects or boats that you guys have? Uh, well, our biggest uh, learning curve was our tugboat, our 1930 tugboat, the Mighty Quinn. And we bought that in 2016. It was the first boat we bought together to live aboard. And we started on the inside like dummies <laughs> and we put a whole bunch of time and money into redoing the interior. Yeah. It was Aaron's thing. He really liked the boat. I couldn't quite see the potential of it. Mm -hmm. It was very commercial fish boat, you know, dirty baby blue yeah. upholstery and curtains and <laughs> not a great layout. And we gutted the entire thing and it turned out amazing then we went to haul it out, and it was in really bad shape. Oh, wow. So you couldn't see, you know, between the ceiling and the exterior planking, you couldn't see what was going on with the ribs. Yeah. And when we hauled it out, uh, our friend and 
eventual shipwright came and looked at the boat and he said, the only thing holding this boat together is habit. And the whole boat yard was kind of looking at us like, these guys are going to walk, you know, they're not going to take care of this boat. And nobody was very friendly. And, and then we started picking away at it. And Bob Cunningham mentored us through, was it four months of yeah, haul out? Four months of haul out in the and winter. She'd check on us once yeah. a day and say, oh, should we be doing this? Or here's some tools to borrow. Wow. And Pete Stein was a part of that as well. Yeah. And they both mentored us as best they could. And Bob lent us his crew a couple times. And we did a ton of work to it. So yeah. that that was our, our big, oh, this is wood boat ownership. Yeah. You know? Big, big. How big is, what, what's it's the dimensions? 45 are? feet. It's a small tug it's a small boat. small tug. Yeah. But it, it was an interesting boat because it was, uh, it had a fiberglass house on it. At some point, somebody had, had bought a, a Nordic Tug 32 house and pilot house that was sitting in the Nordic yard. It, the boat had had a fire and this house was sitting in the yard and they bought it and installed it very nicely on the boat and it fit. Wow. It was great. So it had a fiberglass <laughs> house, which is like, hmm, that's oftentimes the biggest problem with boats yeah. is the top sides. Yeah. So we thought this is great, but we didn't really think too much about the bottom side. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. But we learned the skills during that project yeah. to not be terrified to take on more wood boats after that right. and Obviously, to not yeah. have to hire people to do the majority of the work, you know, which is the big thing with wood boats. There's mm -hmm. less and less tradesmen. Mm -hmm. um, it's very expensive to own a wood boat if you can't do the work yourself. Yeah, so for sure. we did 45, 45 frames. 45 frames, uh, oh. probably 25% of the planking by the time we were done, completely refastened and recocked. Well, so they ate yeah. their words. You didn't walk. You yeah. finished yeah. the project. It, it was funny, the dynamic. It was the first month where you're dismantling, and we looked kind of dismayed and not knowing what we were doing the first <laughs> month. And people would walk around us and make sure that they were out of our uh out of our space mm -hmm. and as we started to dig into it and they started to see these guys are actually going to do it then they started coming and talking to us and giving us advice mm -hmm. mostly great advice some mm -hmm. bad advice but it, it changed the dynamic and we made friends there because of that mm -hmm. yeah and it was amazing we put it in the water in december and let it sit for a couple days and then went for a week and a half cruise of the San Juans, mm -hmm. our first cruise wow. of the San Juans. That's it's great. the main yeah. vessel we've used for our cruising. Since, the tug. up yeah. until about a year ago. What's the name of this tug? The Quinn. Mighty Quinn. The Mighty yeah. Quinn. That's, That's such a great name. Yeah. 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 And it, it has a, a fun history. It was built in 1930 as a monkey boat, so it towed the sailing, the Bristol Bay sailing boats out oh, yeah. out to its fishing grounds and back in, in in the evening or whenever. I don't know the whole story on that, but in 1946 it was they strapped it onto the ship of uh, the, the deck of a ship to bring it home to seattle to do repairs and in somewhere in the strait of san strait of juan de fuca that ship was t-boned by another ship and oh, it geez. went down in 140 feet of water or something like that and they oh. rescued all of the canned salmon that was on that ship <laughs> but they left the boat attached to the boat and the the dive master from the salvage went back two years later and rescued the boat no so it was way. at the bottom for two years in the what straight on to fuca wow and he rescued it and made it his own boat he must have repowered it obviously and wow uh, so that's part of its history that's the fun part <laughs> amazing yeah, yeah i can't the even cargo ship was the diamond knot wow right. the Which, deck that it was strapped to yeah and apparently to this day, it's the largest salvage operation of a ship in the Puget Sound. It was like a $2 million operation. Oh, my gosh. And this is in 1946. Jeez. Were, that is a history, they man. They were just launching Iron Feather. At yeah. That right. <laughs> That's right. That's amazing. So the last time we went through the Strait of Juan de Fuca, it got really stinky. Yeah. And it was really foggy at the same time. And we were in tug, and we were thinking... Oh, does she remember? Uh -huh. You know, this is wow. where she went down. And yes. She sort of shiver did. Shiver me timbers. She did remember, <laughs> too. She she reminded herself because yeah. we thought we were sinking at one point. Yeah. Turns out it was a, a fresh water hose had blown off. Oh, and oh it yeah. It pumped our, our entire fresh water tank into the build, and <laughs> I thought we were sinking. Oh, yeah. Gosh. <laughs> 
the stories you must have over all yeah, the years. Yeah. That's an amazing uh, project. Anything else uh, stick yeah. out in terms of your, your boating uh, ownership or projects that you've taken on? Uh, well, a really fun boat was the Breeze, and that was 1952 yeah, wood boat. 30, and a 36-foot fishing boat. It, yeah, it looked like a mini purse saner. Oh, yeah. real cute. That. That's, that's the one that's the one, one that was saw, yeah. in Boat Haven. Okay, yeah. Yeah. very yeah. cool nice boat. Lines. Yeah, I like yeah. That boat. Yep. and that was a gentleman that came into the shop, and he'd maybe been in a few times. We didn't know him that well, and he said, "I want you guys to have my boat. You know, free boat." And we're like, "Oh, well, we really shouldn't You've be doing this. Before. We're really trying to not <laughs> <laughs> trying to cut back." You know, yes. so we went to the John Wayne Marina and saw it, and. It had broken free of its mooring and went up on the rocks and broke its rudder, oh. and it laid there for a while, chafing like a, like the like a week, yeah, chafing the anti-fouling off of the planks there, and the planks, the, and the planks, yeah. it really <laughs> right. chewed up. Mm -hmm. So then it went back to its slip, and nobody did anything about it, and it ended up getting Torito worms in mm -hmm. the planks where the anti-fouling had come mm -hmm. off. And so we went to see the boat, of course, not knowing what was going on under the water line, but he did disclose there was no rudder. And uh, it turned out it wasn't free. He wanted money for it. And we eventually settled on a price mm -hmm. and uh, towed it straight to Port Townsend with our tugboat mm -hmm. and hauled it out. And that's when we found the Torito worms, which yeah. we'd never seen those before. It was just one They're more thing on the list of... things. Yeah. Crazy things that can happen to wood boats, right. you know. <laughs> Are they? Do you? Can you see the sign from the outside, or is it when you start? You see holes. It's like giant termite holes. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I've noticed it was happening when I was like chunking a plank out, and all this clear ooze started mm -hmm. coming yeah. out. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like that's not right. This yeah. is very that's strange. Not good. <laughs> but it wasn't rampant. It was pretty contained to a couple planks, and we replaced the planks and. It was a boat that had been completely rebuilt. Like it was a a deep draft, round bottom, fantail kind of boat. And yeah. somebody had rebuilt it into having a transom and a flat bottom. It was still a fairly yeah. deep draft, but it totally rebuilt, totally rewired, rebuilt engine. It had something like $160,000 put into it. And then it just, this happened and it sat. Yeah. So we got it like five years after its restoration with its issues hmm. and it was a fun project because most everything was fantastic on it, but it had these issues mm -hmm. that we took care of and played with it. We always, if we get a boat in our possession, we go enjoy it and see what it's like. And mm -hmm. I like driving it, you know, maneuvers. That, that was kind a of fun thing. boat to drive. Yeah. yeah. And it had a big hydraulic boom on it. So we got to do some work. We got to help some. Uh, pull, the pull the mast out with it. Yeah. Yeah. But the, I mean, we have pretty lengthy relationships with each vessel we take on. I wouldn't necessarily call it a flip because of our business and wanting to stay local. We have to make sure every boat we sell is safe and all the systems mm -hmm. are gone through and it's not going to be a lemon for somebody or they're not going to have to spend a bunch of money on it right away. Mm -hmm. So, and the more you dig, the more you find with these boats. So sometimes we don't know when to stop. I mean, we had tug mm -hmm. for six or seven years yeah. And uh, that one we we would have been or been better off selling it years ago, mm -hmm. but we just kept picking away at it and doing more projects. And yeah. but it, it just got better. It, I yeah, finishing the project and it's never done. But yeah, getting it to a point where you can go use it and enjoy it and understand that it's reliable and it's going to be okay to use. For somebody yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like a turnkey yeah. situation. And, and we got a really good trip out of it at the end, and then we sold it almost shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. That's good. This episode of The Boat Geeks is sponsored by The Boater's Guide, a free app for Pacific Northwest boaters. The Boater's Guide is adventure and information right at your fingertips right when you need it. Find your happy place with The Boater's Guide, a free download on your phone or tablet in the App Store and Google Play. Yeah, it's great that you guys get we're, that. We were just talking about that, the old adage that Darren and I yeah. hate. Hate it. The best two days in a boat owner's mm -hmm, life. Yeah. I have always disagreed with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That's the dumbest mm -hmm. saying. And it was a non-boater that came up with right. it, obviously. I mean, I get where it comes from, but for sure, like 
the yeah. best days are when you're out on your boat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you and sometimes anchored. and sometimes yeah. when you're working on it. I mean, right. yes. you guys got to yeah. know every nook and cranny and intimately yeah. became one mm-hmm. with that with those vessels. Mm-hmm. There's something to be said for that those times too. Yeah, absolutely. Would you guys consider yourselves now experts on wood boat restoration? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> there's still so no. much to learn. Yeah. I mean, that's a good attitude, yeah. but I, I wonder yeah. if you really are mm-hmm. experts, but uh, because who else would do the projects that you guys do and not only do that, but make it all the way through to the end. Yeah. You know? we're, um, we're not always making it to the end, but we're making it to a point where the boat point. is, is safe and yeah. somebody can pick up where you left off. Yeah. Yeah. And, it and, has value again. Yeah, right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Saving boats is right. is yeah. a, is a great value for sure. It's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So what is your current boat situation? We're down to one boat, which is <laughs> what? Very <laughs> unusual for us. <laughs> Hold and steady. Yeah. So, and it's it's a it been a long-term boat for us. It's a William Garden trawler. <laughs> it's 50 feet. Um People mistake it for a Defever or a Grand Banks Alaskan. It's mm-hmm. similar to that, but it has a, the kind of cartoony, classic garden design to it that's uh, stands out. It's it's a very cool boat, and I've right on. Almost like every boat we've ever owned, I've hated it and I've loved it, and I think I'm pretty much in love now. Yeah, but there was many times I hated it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, 1964. Yeah, so it's been fun to redo Sweet. the the yeah. interior, but yeah. It it was another alongside tug where the the learning curve was steep. Very steep. Yes. Um, when we bought the boat, there was two existing surveys on it, and then we paid for a third survey, and none of the surveyors caught the delignification that was happening, and it was mainly under the fuel tanks mm-hmm. and around the rudder shaft. So anywhere there was an underwater metal passing mm-hmm. through the hole. There was starting to be some white fuzz, and if we had really gotten down on our bellies and looked around, we would have said, "Hey, what is that?" That's you know. But stuff, we were just yeah. trusting the surveyor to be our advocate yeah. and protect us from travesty, and protect the insurance company from travesty as well. Right. There was a lot of other things that were missed, so we lived with that for a while. And once we knew it was there, treated it with white vinegar, not as often as we should have, but we kept it at bay. We learned about it because we hauled out and mm. there was some funny business happening while we were hauled out with this white fuzz forming mm. right at the shaft log. You'd, oh, yeah, you'd put paint. your bottom paint on it and within 10 minutes, uh, this fuzz is growing out of it. Whoa. I forgot about that. So that was alarming. Whoa. And then we put the boat in the water. This is after a week haul out in Edmonds and it was taking on a lot of water and it didn't seem right. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, we, we brought it home. And there, it's like a kind of like termites where you can't see things just travel. And mm-hmm. so there was a big void in the planking and the frames down there by the one of the shaft logs that was leaking a lot. And our, mm-hmm. our buddy did splash zone. We lived with it for, what, two years, and we didn't really take the boat out. We'd take it around Liberty Bay and just keep it operational. But mm-hmm. it wasn't a boat you could safely go anywhere. So when we decided to haul it out, I had to build a framework of steel for the rudders so that I could stabilize the rudders because the wood was so far gone around it that you could just the weight wiggle the rudder. Yeah. The rudder. It, it was it was really bad. Wow. But we made it to Port Townsend and <laughs> we repaired all that. And that um, was a six month haul out, wasn't I it? I think it was five months. Five months? I'm jealous because uh, William Garden is my favorite designer of all time. And before we bought this boat, before we bought Traveler, we had an accepted offer on a 1961 William Garden 50-foot trawler named Silver Lady. I've and seen that boat before, that, oh, I think. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. We were so excited. It was up in uh, St. Petersburg. Okay. We had tickets. We were going to fly up there. Wow. The yeah. owner had accepted our offer and all this stuff. Two days before flying up, she called to say, um, I sold the boat. Oh. So we came this close. Wow. To, yeah. Huh. So this was our second choice, which, right. was, which yeah. is fine. But <laughs> I still dream about someday owning a wooden boat designed by William Garden, launched the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> that boat did it, and it slipped out of my uh. grasp. But anyway. There's one on the market. What year was that one? 
We were looking Re- at. Oh, yeah, 64, yeah. 63. It's a really cool William Garden. It's his Wanderer design. It's very oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's cool a design. That's a very cool boat. My favorite boat regionally by Garden is uh, Sophia. That's, yeah, that's often, like North Sea Trawler yeah, looking boat. Uh, often at the Wooden Boat Festival. Yeah. Very cool boat. Beautiful. Yeah. Festival. Anyway. We're really hoping to host a, a Bill Garden rendezvous. Oh. Um, yeah. In the 2025. next. 2025. Yeah. The, yeah. the boat geeks will be there. We will be yeah. there. Let us know <laughs> for sure. Wow. We yeah. want to give everyone plenty of time to plan and for our upstairs to be finished. And so it'll be at the Port of Paul's Bow. Oh, wonderful. Their yeah. new guest moorage docks. I did, I did own a William Garden design boat. It was a, a 40-foot sailboat. A okay. Gulf. Oh yeah, a golf. That's a big golf. Well, they were yeah, they were actually built by Choi Lee okay. in the early '60s, and they made they made like ten wood golf forties. Yeah, hmm. somebody in Seattle made a mold, and there were five fiberglass. No, but they were, it was like a Cape George. It was just a solid glass hull, and everything else Owner was wood. Finished, so kinda. I have owned okay. one garden design uh. in my life, so I, at least I've done that. Didn't know that existed. I'll have to look it yeah. up. Yeah, so that one was Great. fiberglass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. So many unique boats out there, even people who've been in the, you know, around boats for decades. There's just so much to discover. I love the, uh, you know, custom boats and the unique uh, finds that you have. You could do marina walks or whatever and all the, Mm -hmm. just so many cool boats. Mm -hmm. It's great to talk to other boat lovers. (laughs) Boat geeks. Yes, boat (laughs) geeks. Um, So owning a long ship and working on boats must be a lot of fun, right? Because <laughs> you have all these things to work with when you're mm-hmm. restoring your boats, right? I yeah. have one one it, question though. Before that, is uh, do you guys ever sleep? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Occasionally, yeah. You guys are so lazy. <laughs> you only have one boat right now. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a little like being in a boat cult, I guess, where we don't we don't get to see our family or friends yes, very often. It's true. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, antisocial at times because yeah. we're overworked and yeah. <laughs> but yeah the store i mean when we're working on a project we might walk up there four times in a day when we're closed to sure. get something to go and, shopping <laughs> yeah it's our own shopping it's, experience yeah. it must yeah. be amazing yeah, it is wow. yeah. and you know right where every little yeah. 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 is too because yeah. for, for the rest <laughs> of us we come in and we just wander I mean, that's the joy is just looking at everything that you already know where it all is. Yeah. I think pe- people wonder how it, we get the comment every day. How do you know, you know, like you, they ask where something is and mm. I take them right to it. And mm. the reality is it's because I'm there shopping every day it's yeah. not because I work there. Yep. How many, how many total items have you ever estimated? Yeah. Our system takes care of that. Yeah. We finally have real time inventory, new and used, um, it's over a hundred thousand items. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk. Okay, wow. so we're talking about uh, Longship Marine. It's in Polsbo. Um, very easily accessible from the uh, port of Polsbo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like a quick walk right up the the ramp there, and it's right there. You'll see um, Longship up on the uh, the the sign and um, two story building. Uh, it's an old nineteen oh eight. Uh, let's right. see, and I want to get the name right. The the Grieg Hall Performance and Event Center is what it was right. called, right? Yes. Um. So amazing, but that's not where it was when you bought it, right? No, it was next door. It was in a, yeah, right. Okay, so Longship Marine, you can uh, check it out at uh, longshipmarine dot com. Um, you have new, used, consignment, everything, and I wouldn't even say it's just for boats right it could be just for adventurers and yep. the outdoors mm-hmm. or collectors tiny people that house. like antiques tiny houses van life yeah anything yeah. uh where you know the, the the small living um and just cool items like uh darren was saying you just walking through there looking at everything um you have so many you know again since you have consignment and used you have old antiques and just really curious and interesting items you have new stuff um kind of a dream shop for any yeah. uh boat lover for any boat geek yeah any boat <laughs> geek and i and i and i would say probably people come to poles boat to come to the shop yeah I mean, they do yeah yeah i mean it's got to be yeah. a destination especially for boaters and uh and the season's coming up i'm sure uh you know you guys are fully aware of that because all the projects you have going on at Longship. um but not only do you have consignment new and used items but recently 
now people can buy online, right? You're shipping uh, ni- nationwide. Yep. And uh, people can just go shop. Mm-hmm. I looked. You can shop by category, everything from anchors to zinc, of course, everything in between. Um, you can shop by new, by used, um, and just order everything there. So if you can't make it to the shop, you definitely want to check out what they have. And the cool thing is you're always getting new items. So like, uh, it's always worth going and checking what has come in. Tuesday, somebody brought us a, I didn't measure it and I haven't weighed it, but a a bell, it's probably a 12 inch bell. Wow. It's dated 1962. It's bronze. Oh, wow. It weighs 50 pounds (laughs) and it has the most amazing Uh, sound. I get chills when we, when Mm -hmm. we ring it. It's amazing. That is cool. Just random stuff shows up sometimes. How long have you been the owner of long ship i bought it in 2012 but you were there prior to no i uh it was uh you were a consigner i was a consigner okay. tell yeah. us about this 2012 how did how did the the purchase of long ship uh, uh, i was a consigner i think it, it was formed in march of 2010 as a business and it's kind of a long story how it happened but it was mm-hmm. this nice lady that was uh, uh, she was recently widowed right? and her husband had a store called contractors warehouse and mm. some anchored out lady talked Lois, mm-hmm. the, the woman that started Longship, into starting a Marine consignment store wow. somehow pitched to her that this yeah. would be a good business right. plan to do. <laughs> and, and she did, and she did a wonderful job she at did. it. Yep. Um, she kept, you know, paper logs of everything and had the yeah. consigner money cash in envelopes behind wow. the desk and very organized yeah. and so sweet, just such a sweet lady. Yeah. And she didn't know what any of the boating items were really because she didn't have a boating background, but mm. she had good business sense. Yeah. I mean, when right. we looked at her numbers after several years of being in business, we're like, oh, Lois was doing okay, you know? Cool. <laughs> she was a Spanish teacher at the local school, so everybody yeah. knew her as a Spanish teacher. But her, what an her interesting... husband was the business okay. person. Yeah. yeah. But so I guess the way it worked, I was a consigner. I was rigging sailboats and I would pass through Paul's boat because I was like the traveling rigger mm-hmm. and would bring stuff, sailboat stuff usually, you know, you pull something off a boat and bring it sure. here and sell it. <laughs> and we were going on a trip. My girlfriend at the time, we were going to go to Alaska on our sailboat for the summer of 2012. And I was kind of let her know like, Hey, I'm not going to collect any money or anything for a while. Don't worry about me. And she said, Aaron, I'm thinking about selling the business and I want you to buy it. Wow. Like, Okay. <laughs> kind of wow. took me by surprise, but I thought about it for the whole summer and thought, hmm. you While know you're what? up in Alaska? Yeah. Yeah. If I get back and it's still available, I think it's the right thing for me. So I got back and in November, November 1, 2012, I took over and it's been tough. Sure. But it's, Retails. it's been fun too. Yeah. I bet. It's created a lot of opportunities. Uh, the, the whole boat thing, like, Having all these boats in our life would never have happened without that. Sure. Better or worse, I mm-hmm. guess. But but he probably didn't have a vacation for no. seven oh, years. Yeah. 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 He was running it by himself when, when I met him. And it's way too much, even for two people, right. let alone one person. So. Yeah. We just hired an employee. It's our yeah. first real employee. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big Thanks. step. <laughs> yeah. That's daunting in a way, isn't it? It is. Yeah. If you find the right people, I think it's less daunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So you've had Longship for 12 years. 12 years, yeah. Over 100,000, hundreds of thousands of items probably. Yeah, the things you've seen over the years. Yeah, what stands out (laughs) in your long tenure as your favorite (laughs) items that you've ever had come through the store that might be unusual or... I know what mine is. Yeah, Yay. please. What is yours? <laughs> mine is the the tiger shark jaw. Oh yeah. Ooh. So yeah. it came with the store when Aaron took over, and then we had at least three three people claimed its its ownership. Yeah. Over so <laughs> that time period, wow. we wanted to buy them from the consigner, but we didn't know who actually owned it because right. people would call and say, "Those are my tiger shark jaws." I'm like, "Well, so this other person says it's theirs." What? <laughs> and this was before we owned it, so. 
We eventually found the rightful owner and, and purchased them outright, <laughs> but they hang above the fireplace in the library at the store. So, how, but, did, how did you determine who the yeah. rightful owner? I think was? we had to call Lois, the yeah. previous oh, owner. Some yeah. research, and, she, yeah, yeah, she remembers everything. Right. And those other people, <laughs> naughty, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. they had some weird association with it, which yeah. made them think it was theirs. Yeah. I think in their mind they thought it was theirs, but they weren't the rightful owners, hmm. right? Yeah. This episode of The Boat Geeks is sponsored by The Boater's Guide, a free app for Pacific Northwest boaters. The Boater's Guide is adventure and information right at your fingertips right when you need it. Find your happy place with The Boater's Guide, a free download on your phone or tablet in the App Store and Google Play. What about you? Do you have any favorite items? There's so many items. It's, yeah. it's hard to say. What do you get excited about when items are coming in? If people are consigning, so if somebody's bringing a box in. Cunningham ships. Horns, yeah. Ships uh, whistles, horns. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Bells, yeah. spotlights. 50, yeah. Pound, 50 pound bells. Those are cool. I haven't really had any cannons come through. There's somebody that uh, he threatens cannons. He has a collection, yeah. but he hasn't brought them yet. He hasn't wanted to give them up. I guess signaling devices. Maybe that's my Rep, favorite. The replica yeah. cannons. Yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are fun. Spotlights, uh, horns, and cannons. Things he can terrorize people with. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Yeah. Do you, do you uh, have any interest in particular items that come in, or is it just everything? Oh, probably like, you know... Uh, actual tasteful nautical art, yeah. which we get nice. a lot of not tasteful, <laughs> but every once in a while, you know, we just got this amazing bronze pelican in oh, yeah. that, you know, mid century pelican Ooh, yeah. and some mid century uh, seagull watercolors. And so, uh, huge glass balls, the largest yeah. is oh. 20 inches, I think. Right. So, like we got Japanese floats. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And since I do the staging of the store, that stuff's mm -hmm. really fun for me. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I stayed till almost midnight restaging last week. And then the next day we had two giant drop offs just right in the middle of the floor. Just didn't even look like a proper store anymore. So wow. it's the stuff is coming in much faster than we can process it. Yeah. And we feel like we're the only two that can handle the processing part of mm. it. So that's that's the early morning routine as we get there at seven and we do inventory until we open at ten. And Every wake up and do it again. Day, right. Yeah. <laughs> Every it, day you're open. Yeah. Inventory is different for us than most people would think. Most people would think you're counting what you have on your shelves, mm. and that's not what it is. We're pricing and actually processing people's products. Right. Researching it. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. pretty fun for the most part because there's always good stuff in there, but sometimes people bring in a bunch of junk and we sure. fill up the free bin with it and mm -hmm. it yeah. goes away mm -hmm. so i shouldn't bring in that black velvet sailboat painting <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Might I, be I, all right. just, just kidding <laughs> <laughs> what uh let's see so what i was actually thinking is um i don't know how you guys do it, it, it you know like the amount of work that you have just with the retail store and everything that you have to do with that, processing items, doing the research, um, deciding how much you're going to sell it, all that. It's not like a, a normal new store where everything comes in right. boxed and yeah. you just put it up on the shelf. Yeah. Already barcoded. And yeah. And owning wooden boats and doing all that. Um, are you guys tired all the time? What 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 gets <laughs> they you? They don't sleep. I know. Like, <laughs> it, it really, I mean, you just must love the the, the, the boating life and yeah. uh obviously you live in paradise paul's bows yeah it's pretty great. beautiful and yeah. we're liveaboards too i don't know yeah. if that's been mentioned but yeah I, yeah i mean i knew it but that's yeah. a that's a great thing right. yeah so we're... yeah we have an amazing end tie slip so beautiful view and we walk to work every day and nice. yeah. we try to sleep in but we have so much going on that, I mean, I'm excited when I wake up each day. It's like, let's go and wow. tackle some more stuff. Good for you. You There's know? a lot of fun yeah. stuff happening in our lives mm -hmm. right now. It's stressful and mm -hmm. it's difficult, but it's fun. And it's things that we can see change with and progress. And it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of that, upstairs. Yeah, let's talk about, you've got a project going on right now with the shop. Um, we were there, we got to see a little bit of uh, what's going on inside. You got that whole upper story. And that is uh, big on your mind right now and your right. to do list every day, right? So what are you guys doing? 
we are creating an event center, an event space. It'll be like a concerts, weddings, yacht club rendezvous, uh, boat r- William Garden rendezvous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Fingers crossed. Yeah, there's not really any like significant space in Polsbo or North Kitsap like this, so we're hoping to fill in a niche. Huh? Fill in a niche, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and it is a very yeah. uh, open, big space. Like I had no cool. idea mm-hmm. going on. We'll up. have to go down with our cameras and, yeah. and do a special episode from Longship. If you guys will have yeah. us, we'd love to show it off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's a kind of a forgotten space. It had not had occupancy since like 1972. It was the Man. Sons of Norway from 1918 till 1972, and then they moved, and it just remained empty. For a number of reasons, and it's a really cool space. It's yeah. It's How many square fun. feet is that upper uh, part? Forty seven hundred square feet, I think. Yeah, it's big and yeah. open and tall. We yeah. need to dance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was the only dance hall in Paulsbo. Yeah, back in the day, where you could get a hot dog and a beer and and go out dancing. So. <laughs> Right. Yeah, the, well, the old timers remember being in there and how it was set right. up and where the coat check was and. You said 1972 it stopped? Yes. That's the year I was born. So that's a long time yeah. for no use Nothing, of that right. space. Yeah. Um, good for you guys. And yeah. you're and, and Nico, you're wanting to do have classes up there as well, like boating classes and instructional safety type stuff. Yeah. So there's a waterfront classroom that's a separate room. So yeah. we have the, the grand hall and then the classroom. Mm-hmm. And so we're hoping to primarily use the the waterfront side for the classroom. And that will be the the nonprofit arm of the business, and then the wedding venue will be the for profit arm. And um, it they can still use the big hall if they want sure. to, but we'd be hosting various teachers and uh, cruisers sharing their mm. their trip and what they've been through, and mm. tips and uh, diesel maintenance, basic rigging, safety at sea. Uh, Marine electrolysis. Right. <laughs> yeah. For sure, what, right? What, white fuzz. Yeah, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's 14 marinas in Kitsap County, so I think there's mm-hmm. plenty of boaters to come to the classes. And Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of the uh, busiest ports, a, a major destination for boaters in Puget Sound. Um, I think that's freaking awesome that you guys are doing that with that space. I hope I can attend some events there. <laughs> um, definitely going to keep tabs with uh, the progress. Is this the biggest wooden the biggest project working with wood that you've taken on i mean you've done a lot of wooden boat <laughs> yeah. work yes right but that's a lot of work right it's a lot of work it's it's a big space and it's yeah. uh had mm, not the best maintenance and not the best um upgrades if you'd call it upgrades there's been a lot of shoddy work that we've had to remove and mm-hmm. structural upgrades that just Mind blowing that the building has stood this long, well, really. Well, With, they don't build them like they used to, though. I mean, it <laughs> no, they build them a lot the, better <laughs> in comparison to this. <laughs> this isn't one of those situations. I'll say the wood is amazing. Uh-huh. Yeah. It, it's yeah, it's all yeah, old growth it's and old growth, and it's like incredible how many rings per inch on the the lumber and all mm-hmm. that, but. Mm-hmm. They didn't have any kind of engineering degree when oh. they designed anything. And I, I think part of it is it was Sons of Norway, so there was a lot of uh, volunteer work happening. So and it was built just, in 1908, right? 1908, and yeah. that part was okay, but then the rest was just kind of mm-hmm. not so great. Yeah. Have you found um, uh, kind of a not, not a transition, but benefit from working on wood boats? I was, to extending it to this building now? To is, some degree. I think uh, in a past life, I was a contractor, so I was building custom homes and that sort of okay. thing. So I was already pretty well versed with wood, but the wood boat part actually helped me refine my woodworking skills. Hmm. It hmm. put an, brought me to another level of, mm-hmm. of ability and seeing how structure can and should be held together or things like that. Cool. Weird angles. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I bet. For sure. I think it, it works well together, and, and I'm enjoying this project a lot. Well, it's, good. It's a good project. Do you have a 
an ETA, a, a, a approximate ETA on the amount of, I mean, obviously, as you dive into a project like this, like you mentioned it before, grows, you're yeah. finding more things. You haven't found any Torito. <laughs> no, termites. <laughs> Just termites. No live great. termites, but there's Good, quite a okay. bit of termite stuff I've removed. Okay. Uh, we were shooting for January 1, and we're still shooting for that, but it's, it may not happen, I guess. <laughs> well, do you have... Um, you know, we deal with uh, influencers and uh, folks of that nature that have Patreon supporters, right. supporters yeah. and stuff. Are you guys looking to get the community involved to help? I mean, you we've, guys do so much on your own. We've talked about that. Uh, we did have a lot of help um, from the community. Like we painted the exterior mm -hmm. and yeah. people pitched in for that right. and people have helped upstairs we don't have our permit yet, so once we have clear green light to go and mm -hmm. we know that all the things we want to do are going to be okay with the city of Paul's Bow, then yeah. it would be nice to have some laborers in there for sure. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a good the, – the boating community, I find, uh, is very helpful in those terms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People will do a lot for a six-pack of beer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I think, again, um, Longship is just – Mo every boater I know knows about it and likes going to long ship. So I, again, it's part of, I think just the, the it's ingrained into the boating community up well, here. And for those who have never been to long ship, you should make a pilgrimage yes. to Polsbo. I mean, there's so much in Polsbo anyway. It's Already. one of the most popular destinations. And we had Eugene Maddie Ag mm -hmm. yep. uh, on the show recently and mm -hmm. talking about the new breakwater Ooh, good. Yeah, out good. there. So right. there's a well, there's like a hundred more slips now for mm -hmm. guests. Um, yeah. But this shop you must see, and there aren't a lot of similar shops mm -hmm. on the West Coast no. that have consignment used and new part. Uh, right. You know, marine supplies. How many do you? Do you know how many are left on the West Coast by any chance? There's, of course, minis, which is big, but they're not consignment. They buy their stuff, and mm -hmm. I think they're for sale. And then there's the Blue Pelican, which I, I, I've not been to the California places. That's, I'm not going to say where, but it's somewhere in California. Mm -hmm. um, that's a small kind of a boutique-y sort of place is what I heard. Yeah, and then Marine Thrift in the yeah, boatyard Port in Port Townsend. Well, um, that's so small. I mean, and that's like a closet compared right. to what yeah. donation Longship only. Is. Donation yeah. only, so yeah. you can't earn money on your goods. As far as that, I'm not aware of any others. There was one up in Sydney. Uh, we've watched, oh, I remember that. Yeah, one. we've watched yeah. three of them close in in mm -hmm. Washington State. I think it was three. Mm -hmm. Since we've been open, and I, we even watched one open, open and, and close, close. Right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, you know. we're dinosaurs, I'm afraid. Yeah, you know, and those, uh, yeah, boy, that gets me depressed because it's, it's the best shops, you know. Like, um, yeah. it's it's so sad when you see stuff like that closing. But you guys, let's flip it around. It's positive for you guys. Um, you're going strong. It's obviously a struggle doing any retail business. Um, but you know, it's the first thing you see when you get off the, at the port of Polsbo and, and, and it, it's just, again, it's like a landmark and, and a, a destination for boaters. Mm -hmm. And, um, we need to do everything that we can to support shops like that. I always, you know, a hundred percent would prefer to buy something from a shop than buy local. Yeah. Buy local, buy local, buy local. Um, so if you have not been to, uh, Longship Marine, check out, uh, longshipmarine.com, um, and uh, again, if you can't make it down there, which we recommend that you do, because uh, there's nothing quite like it's um, I liken it to when I walk into a bookstore. I love bookstores, everything about them, used bookstores, especially. But uh, the smell and it's again, it's the same thing when I walk into Longship. It's just uh, I love it. <laughs> and uh, so there's nothing that can beat that experience. But um, supporting local businesses is always a good thing. So even if you can't get there, check out uh, their website. And again, uh, if you are in um, the United States, you can get anything shipped to you that they have there, including maybe this bell. Is it, uh, is it up for? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've not priced it yet. Yeah. <laughs> so keep looking. And that's the cool thing is I do go back and look regularly at their store now because um, they get new things in all the time or new used consignment type stuff. And so 
um, just a great resource, and I'm so glad that we're this close to yeah, them. Yeah, we're lucky. Yeah. We're so lucky. <laughs> we really we're are. Only, we're only 20, 25 minutes away. Yeah. Or, yeah, we'll frequently get cruisers that are about to head south, and their last yeah. stop will be yep. Paul's Bow, and they'll spend yeah. a month or two just finishing outfitting their boat. Right. And um, Or people will come to try a sail before they buy it so they can check out a sail and physically take it down to their vessel and see if it fits properly. Mm-hmm. And uh, Which is handy because, again, you're just right there from the <laughs> marina. Yeah. yeah. So it's like 200 yeah. yards. Yeah. Really. It's the first thing you yeah. see. It's, yeah. And I, and I love that building and I love your space. What does it say up, up on the wall? Longship. Mar- Marine supply. Marine supply. Oh, Marine yeah. supplies. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Marine sitting here supply. Saying, so you, you can't yeah. miss it. Yeah. yeah. Just go, that, go to that. That was a fun, uh, a fun project. We didn't even talk about moving, but when we moved into oh that building, the, the city requires a permit, which also requires uh, an engineer to engineer any kind of sign that you put on your building, whether it's a piece of plywood, you really have it engineered and stamped. Interesting. So I came up with the idea. Let's just paint it on there. I mean, yeah, make simple. it big. Yeah. <laughs> and was and that worked? It was it worked. Nice. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Four or five years ago, it's holding up well. Yeah. And it's a and it's uh, you know a sign right to the people that are going to be your customers yeah. as they're walking up. Biggest life. Yeah. So people can people can in about a month I think they're going to open up the breakwater. Yeah. So and right now you have uh winter hours. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Yeah. When when does it turn into seasonal hours? April 1. So we're getting so close. Yeah, Tuesday through Saturday 10 to 5. Mm, do you feel the pressure coming more mm-hmm. work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Less time for the upstairs project yeah. and Yeah. So but, we'll we'll need to go down we're hoping and, that yeah, you guys will have us down there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah. think about uh, what I would like to do, and we've talked about this before, is um, highlight some really cool, unique items that you have. Okay. And uh, so think about those, and then we can go down. And we'll do a special episode and and show these items. And it's funny as long as we've been talking about doing this podcast, which has been years. COVID, uh, you know, we were we were talking about pre-COVID. Um, We've also been talking about working with you guys. You didn't know that, but we've been talking yeah. about working with you guys for years because it was right away. Uh, Darren and I identified that as being something that would be cool content, and we'd have a lot of fun down there. Our guest right. list is two pages long. Yeah, of potential people and entities. Yeah, and we had talked about the fact that it'd be so cool to have you guys on the show and show some really neat things, but you have to come to Polsbo to buy them. But not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Right. Somebody can see it online on video and yep. purchase it and you ship it to them. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, we're definitely in grow mode right now yeah. with the business um, and just trying to stay current and relevant. We have an eBay store now and it offers international shipping. So oh. we can also go that route. Great. Wow. That is good news. Yeah. That's, you're in the big leagues, you yeah. guys. We're That's trying. really impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. And thank you for, uh, you know, for maintaining that shop. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, thank you. Yeah. It's not just a job. You have to have a passion for it to um, put yourself through that, <laughs> you know, every day. And yeah. it's so much work and so much uh, pressure. And uh, yeah. Part, part of the reason we continue is uh, things like what you're saying is, is, uh, the appreciation that people show to us yeah. is helpful, more than helpful. Mm-hmm. It's what keeps us going. Well, yeah, you're you're not. Yeah. yeah, it is needed. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It's a community service. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're a business, obviously, but it's a service. Right. I mean, if if that if if Longship wasn't there, I would feel the vacancy. Yeah, you know, There'd like be that a void. Yeah, definitely, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. So thank you guys, Nico and Aaron, yeah. for being here. Yeah. Um, thank you. We hope that uh, we're going to be working with you again soon and uh, have you back on the show or we're down there. Um, you can find everything you want to know about Longship at uh, longshipmarine.com. They're on Facebook at Longship Store, and they're on Instagram at uh, Longship Marine. And I, you guys are very active. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. You're very active on social media yeah. as well. You guys just, I don't know two hours of sleep a night or what <laughs> i don't know how you do everything but you're uh i i enjoy watching your posts on yeah. on facebook and instagram and um yeah just keep up all the good work you're uh, again just Thank such you. a great service to the boating community in the pacific northwest up here um i 
highly, again, I'll, I'll say it a million times. If you can get down to the shop, do it. It's just a, a mm -hmm. total pleasure to uh, browse through the shop and see all the items that they have there. And, and <clears throat> this upcoming season, if you haven't been, uh, great reason to go to Paul's Bow and uh, just check out a great uh, boating destination and, uh, of course, the shop. So is there anything else you guys would like to say before uh, we move on and go look at Feather for a little bit? Or... How about a couple boat geek anecdotes? Sure. Ooh. Absolutely. All right. Um, so this, it's a, a not really a riddle. What would you call it? And... Is this the Fender? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the hardest working piece on your boat? If, have you ever thought about that? The, the most unappreciated, hardest working piece on your boat. Especially your boat, because you're on the end tie. Yeah. And boats, big boats are hitting you. And <laughs> <laughs> We've Have only you... been hit five times. Oh, <laughs> that's a lot. That 145-footer yeah. and, and four other boats have hit us here. Because wow. the, the guest dock is right there. Right. So. Well, you notice where this whole podcast, we've been kind of swaying Moving. back and forth, yeah. right? Yeah. So are you that hardest working part? has been involved in that, right? Yeah. I mean, we already yeah. know the answer, right? Uh, I think we, yeah. <laughs> what do most people answer? Uh, one really... friend said me. Yeah. He yeah. Said, yeah. The I'm first thing I thought right. was the if owner. If you're a sailor, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah. A power boat. No, because your boat sits at the dock most of the time. Anyway. Yeah. It's your yeah. fenders. It's your fenders. Yeah, yeah, fenders and lines. So yeah. underappreciated. And yeah. people just, they cheap out on fenders yeah. so often. And it's like, dude, yeah. have you looked at your fenders when it's blowing 30? Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. Right. Yeah, I take have, care of your fenders. I have two new ones down in the office. I saw that. Yeah, and uh, gosh, what were they? Ninety bucks each or something, but yeah, worth every penny. Yeah. It's insurance. Yeah, it's absolutely. like having the best ground tackle right. system you can. If you're going to be anchoring, yeah, you want to make sure. That How many you can fenders trust it. do you guys have at Longship? A ton right yeah, now. It, yeah. it waxes and wanes. Totally. Uh, we get a lot of good used fenders in and big boys too. Right. It'll be a huge pile <laughs> oh, yeah. and then in two weeks they're all gone. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 Um the other one is uh what is the most replaced item on a boat, do you think? Like say your boat here, there's this is a, a fairly complex boat. I mean, there's much more complex boats, but what do you find yourself replacing most often? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is dock lines. Okay. Do you replace them often? Well, not often, but in terms of kind of expendables, I mean, they're always right. going to wear. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's, so, yeah, we've gone yeah. through, we've cycled through I, new I, dock lines. I but. guess another side for us as, as shopkeepers, the thing that we maybe sell the most of is right. pumps. Water oh, pumps. oh yes. interesting. Good. Yes. Sit down and count how many pumps are on your boat. Well, we've we've replaced our main freshwater pump three times. Right. So I'm not even talking about engine. And, so your yeah. engine has how many water pumps, and then Two. you have your each, you, each so toilet has a, its own single water pump. Mm -hmm. I think I counted 14 pumps on our boat. Wow. And that's what we sell the most of at the store is pumps. It's bilge pumps and mm -hmm. fresh water pumps. And then you got your raw water pumps and your wash down pump. And you guys must get some Good interesting point. insight, just like what you're revealing here from owning the shop. Like, you know what people are selling the most, you know what people right. are buying the most, um, what doesn't sell, uh, mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Bad marine art. Yeah. <laughs> that does not there is so well. much bad marine art, yeah. right? <laughs> but then you find the good ones. And it's like, oh. Sometimes it's so Those bad, good. it's good, though. Yes, right? it totally. <laughs> like your velvet black <laughs> yeah. nautical I don't thing. even have one. I, I remember. The first thing that popped into my mind was, how bad can it get? <laughs> uh, I remember some pretty bad black yeah, velvet yeah. paintings. I had yeah. one when I was growing up that was of Snoopy. Yeah. I'm like a nice. kid, and I still remember that i loved that black velvet <laughs> yep. when i was a teenager my friend's house had uh one of those and it was uh the husband had one made of his wife uh not wearing clothes and so that was on the wall when you, black velvet <laughs> wow. yeah a so boudoir painting. yes it was awesome. it, it was uh anyway good time um i don't think that painting would sell or can you even call them paintings but yeah. um anyway those were good though I, I like that. Thanks. Maybe we should adopt some kind of a segment every <laughs> our new, every episode. Yeah. We got to have a um, our next kind logo of a, will a be boat black geek velvet. question or riddle. Yeah, I love your yeah. That that, that that's was awesome. really good. Yeah, definitely. Thanks. Do you guys Makes have any? Think. 
Yeah. Do you have any uh, nautical art in the store currently? Do you have a oh, section? Quite a bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we got a ton in in the yeah. last month. So we're going to do a nautical art sale in the next month. Oh, neat. Yeah. Excellent. So there's a whole yeah. category that's nautical art and decor. Decor, yeah. No oh, neat. So the mm. whole category will be on sale. Well, we will keep an eye out for that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, excellent. Well, thank you, Nico, Aaron, yeah. for being here, and we'll see you uh, next time. Right. Thanks for having us. Thank right. you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Yeah.